Let's, let's pray. Father, I, I just first want to thank you uh, for Jesus. I want to thank you that um, even though I was born into sin and I was separated from the Father, that you would send your only Son, Jesus, to die so that I might have life. That I might have eternal life with you. And, and God, I, I, don't, I don't really get it when it comes to the kind of love it would take to give away a child in such a way. Your only son, John 3.16 says, your only begotten son, but you loved us so much that you would send him to be a living sacrifice. And not only that would he be sacrificed to cover my sin and everybody's sin in the room and the sins in the past and the sins of the future, but, but God, Jesus would not stay in the grave. He would raise again and he would come to life once more to show us that he conquers death. And death comes when we are separate from you. When we don't have that relationship, we are eternally dead to you. But then Jesus comes along and he gives us life. And so I want to thank you for that this evening. I want to thank you that in spite of me, in spite of us, you've loved us so much. I want to thank you for the students and the adults that this evening who are stepping out of faith in their first act of obedience to say to the world that they're yours. That they are not just claiming your name or, or doing the church thing or just trying to get by, but, but they are putting a stake in the ground tonight to the world that they're your children. That they have chosen your son. And that publicly want to declare that to all of us tonight. Thank you for their obedience. Father, thank you again for Jesus. and the, That he is the way and he's the truth and he's the life. And that really there is no other way. God, help us to not take Jesus for granted. We... We get saved and somewhere along the road we, we get complacent. We just assume now that we have our ticket to heaven we can just kind of skate through life. And, and God, you've called us to more than that. You've called us to be sold out followers of your Son. To live and model and be as He was. To strive to be like Him. So that one day we can stand before you and hear you say, well done, good and faithful servant. Father, oh, would we be that kind of people that would work to that end. To see the prize at the end of the finish line of your face smiling as a proud father of those who have worked to be more like you. As your heads are bowed right, right now, and I just want you to think about this for just a moment. Where are you tonight with Jesus? Where are you? Uh, do you know Him? Or do you know about Him? Are you, are you considering Him? You know, it wasn't until I was 15 that I made Jesus Christ my Lord and my Savior. Right in the middle of my high school year, my freshman year, where I began to start seeking and asking and striving to be all that God wanted me to be. And I just want to encourage you tonight to think about where are you with Jesus tonight? This is for all the folks in the room. It's not just for our students. It's for adults too. Where are you with Jesus? Have you ever made that decision? Have you ever said yes to Him and no to yourself? Have you ever said, Jesus, come into my life. 
I want to know you. And I, know what, I want to know the Father. And I want to step out in faith. And I want to be all that you wanted me to be and created me to be. Have you ever done that? Because if you haven't, my prayer for you tonight is that you would make that happen. Don't leave this moment. The Bible says that we are not guaranteed tomorrow. We're not guaranteed next week. We can't make plans. All we can be guaranteed of is this moment. This very moment we find ourselves in. And you're not here by accident, student, parents, friend. You're not here by accident. What we're going to acknowledge and, and see tonight, you too can experience. Where are you with Jesus? The other question I would ask you is this. If you know Jesus tonight, where are you in your obedience to Him? Where are you on the journey? Are you, are you striving to be more like Him? Or are you just kind of melding into the landscape? Do people know whose you are tonight? Do they know that Jesus Christ is important to you and that He is your Lord and Savior? By your life, by your actions, by your words, by your attitudes, do they know? Because we have to live a life different. <laughs> The Bible says we become a new creation when we accept Him. The old is past, the new has come. We have to be different if Jesus is in our life. I'm going to challenge you with those two questions tonight. Father, You know the hearts of those who are here this evening. You know, You knew before they were conceived that they would be here in this moment. You knew who would receive you and those who would reject you. you. You knew before time and space what that would look like. And Father, I pray that we will not assume that we can just kind of skirt this issue. That we can assume that, oh, things are okay without Jesus. It's okay not living for Him. It's okay just to kind of be status quo. Jesus, that, that's not my prayer. And God, I know that's not what you discerned and you, and you wanted to happen when you sent your son. You, you wanted to see disciples, followers of Christ, who would step out in obedience and be all that they need to be for you. And so I, I pray, God, that you would move among us by your Spirit. That you would convict hearts. That you would, you would challenge us and stretch us. And, and God, even make us uncomfortable where these two issues are concerned. That, God, we would not leave this place without first making our relationship with you right. By coming into relationship with Jesus so that we can have a relationship with, with you. And that, too, we would not leave here tonight just doing the thing. But that we would walk out of here courageous and bold and, and ready to live out the life you've called us to live and to tell others about you. Because that's what it's all about. That's why we're still here. We're the hands and the feet of your spirit to go out and share the good news with all we come in contact with. And so God, let us not take that for granted either. The gospel of Jesus Christ that brought us to salvation. Let's not just sit that on the shelf. God, oh, would you change us? Make us more like yourself. Cause us to be like you. Take away the blinders. Take away the scales from our heart. Break us, Father, if it takes that so that we might seek you with all of our heart, soul, and mind. Thank you for those who are going to be baptized. And as we continue to worship tonight, as we watch those who have gone and said yes to you, may we be encouraged and challenged yet still in this worship time. As we worship your Son and thank Him and, and show Him how much we love Him by watching and celebrating those who are choosing you. And God, we may be different because we've been with you this evening.
We love you. And we thank you for this time. We pray these things in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen.